Okay, in this section, uh, we're going to start looking at horns. It's like when a raisin fails. So So we've got, uh, let's start with our saxophone. We've got a uh, sax clean and a sax dirty channel. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just bring my project over. And I'm going to do a little bit of clip editing here. So I just want to know when sax clean and sax dirty happens. Okay, so um, in this instance, I, I think if you've watched any number of uh, mixing tutorials, uh, you'll notice that people really just hack these sessions up um, and trim a lot of things out. Like all the drum hits are, are going to be trimmed, all the vocals are going to be trimmed. Um, and and I, I do that too, if it's, uh, if it's a studio session for sure. Um, but in a live session, in a live recording like this, I'm just going to trim the trumpet while we talk. Um, in a live recording session like that, 
the things that are appearing and disappearing, especially anything that has to do with ambient noise, are very, very noticeable. Um, so uh, this this lead singer danced around a lot. So if you notice, I have the lead vocal uh, channel trimmed up pretty pretty good too. Um, I like to uh, trim only what's necessary. If it's not audibly giving me a problem, I don't generally like to trim it if it's a live recording. I mean, obviously, if it's if it's a problem, then the sky's the limit. Hack it to death. I have I have no uh, I have no issue with that. But uh, in this particular instance, I'm just gonna cut out some ethereal part in here. Let's just confirm that. <laughs> Now, in this instance, I'm hacking this out because the sax player was standing right in front of the bass player. Okay, so... Let's, uh, in this instance, let's start with our dirty sax and see what we've got going on here. So all I'm going to do is just create a little loop here so I don't have to keep... Uh <laughs> cool so he's got so basically we have a sax player that's trying to sound like a guitar player so uh i like this effect it's it's very cool let's uh let's see if we can if we can make it nasty though so uh the first thing that i like to do is i think having a, a guitar uh simulator program is a guitar amp simulator program is like the most valuable thing you could ever have um it just you can do all kinds of cool stuff um when when I was mixing uh, uh, or I was uh, working with another band, uh, I don't know, maybe ten years ago or so, the lead singer in the band loved to put everything through guitar pedals. He thought that just putting a vocal through a guitar pedal or or you know a drum through a guitar pedal just had such a cool effect. And that was a trick that I picked up from him, where I just putting things through guitar pedals, just cheap Boss guitar pedals, or in this case a simulator, is very very cool. Um, you don't have to, sometimes you, you can have a, a $3,000 uh, tube microphone preamplifier that you want to get distorted and grungy and all you have to do is just get a, get a cheap boss distortion pedal and it'll, it'll do everything uh, that you want the $3,000 thing to sound like. So uh, don't be afraid of, of, of thinking outside the box a little bit. Um, another thing that is super cool is the H3000 plugin. It, that's uh, amazing. An H3000 would, will do things for you that, that you, you'll never... Uh, that you can't do with, with other things. So uh, let's just start with a clean guitar sound. So all I'm listening for is just to see what it does to the tone um, and see if we need to uh, do something or not. Hello. There we go. Cool. Maybe we'll take some death metal distortion out there. I like that. Phaser is cool. The Bruce Traveler. Okay, so at this point, you can uh, you can go through everything, but I like what we got with clean rhythm. I think this is cool. So let's maybe dial back our distortion just a little bit. 
Double is cool. Let's see what that does. Okay, so let's use this as an example. I want to add a little bit of delay to this. I think that would really do things that would be really cool. So I have a, uh, have a, a time delay, and I have a, a pitcher delay, but I think the right move with this would be to add a pedal. So let's see what our options are here. Delay, lay, cool. So that's probably a uh, quarter note delay, but let's see what that does. Cool. So all we did there is we, although we pretty drastically affected what, what happened is, we, we took the idea that the guitar or that the sax player was going with with his pedals and just made it a little bit more apparent. Um, so the cool thing is when it comes time to automate, I'm going to take our clean sax because you don't want the clean instrument to go away. It needs it just needs to come down. You just need to split the difference between the two. Um, so what I'm going to do is we're going to take our sax clean and let's let's work on that. Let's see what that sounds like. <laughs> Yep, that sounds like a sax player. Okay, I think I'm gonna change my mind here. I think I'm gonna put my large verb on the sax solo. I'm gonna put my medium verb on the sax clean. That might be too much, but let's see. <laughs> Thank you. 
okay, now we're getting someplace. So what I all I did was is even though it sounded good in his solo, it was a little distracting. You're you're hearing a lot of things hard right, um, because now since we've panned the saxophone signal to the left, you're still getting the stereo effect at our return. So we may need to address that later in the mix. It's just something to uh, keep in mind. So let's listen to our trumpet player. <laughs> So we've got a little bit of waves tune going on here. This is something that can kind of easily be tuned. Wasn't seeing any pitch, uh, pitch information down there. I just might not have had a chance to scan in. use a higher ratio on this. So we're barely hitting our compressor, but when we do, it kicks in. Today. Oh. 
So we're noticing we're we're getting a lot of vocal delay from the, the pitchers um, and slap the, the pitch slap H3000 plugin that we've got going on on the horn. So just something to keep in mind when we really start to bring the vocals. Down. So we're noticing that we've got a lot of verb going on, um, but it is giving the illusion that we've got a very groomy mix. And some serious toms going on too, which is not necessarily a bad thing. Let's take that down. So the cool thing is, if I if I ever want to make this less room, let's make this dry. We've got a nice dry recording now. Instantly, with the click of four buttons, I can make this dry. You can also do that on all of our instruments with this one, but I like to flip this on. I can't help but uh, I can't I can't help but think about the first Dave Matthews record with that slap that slap delay uh, saxophone. It just reminds me of the, the mid '90s, but uh, it, it's not necessarily a bad thing. I thought there were a lot of great records that came out in the mid '90s, but uh, let's bring our rooms in and see where we're at so far. <laughs> Starting to sound like a club in New York. Um, okay, so the uh, the next lesson we're going to look at is uh, we're going to start doing vocals.